I had a request from a student to go through a circle theorem question. Okay, this question is taken from the March 2013 paper one. It's question 19. So we've got, um, well, just by looking at the diagram, you know it's going to be a circle theorem question. Okay, the question says A, B, and D are points on the circumference of a circle, center O. BOD is a diameter of the circle. BC and AC are tangents to the circle. So you need to know what all of these are um, you know, before tackling any circle theorem questions because if you don't understand you know, this terminology then you know, it's going to be very difficult uh, to begin with. So you need to learn what all of these things mean. So we know, obviously we know what the points are, we know what the, these are all points A, B and D, the circumference of a circle is just the, the outer edge. Um, we have a center O, uh, the diameter of course is um, this line here, O, well DOB is the diameter because it passes through the center, so you need to know all of these things. Also BC and AC are tangents to the circle, so we have tangents here. Uh, tangents meet the radius at, well this is another rule you should know yourself, is a tangent BC, so this is a tangent, remember tangent touches the edge at a circle and if it touches, if it meets the radius then um, it meets at a right angle. Okay so it says that angle OCB is equal to 34 degrees. Okay so another thing you need to know is you need to understand angle notation as well. So angle notation, what angle are they specifically talking about? Obviously here you can, as there's only one angle, um, obviously this refers to this angle here angle OCB but you need to understand what this means so remember with angle notation the angle is where the angle located is in the middle so it's going to be at C and O and B enclose it so if this is C then O the point O and B enclose it because we actually have two angles at C we have OCB which is the angle that's given to us and we also have OCA or ACO which is actually this one up here. So that's when you need to know angle notation because you need to pinpoint these angles. Well, the question here says to work out the size of angle DOA. Okay, so angle DOA is actually this angle here. So this is why you actually need to know um, angle notation. So O is where the angle is and D, D and A enclose it, right? So that encloses it as D and A enclose this angle here only so this is the angle we're looking for okay so with most circle theorem questions you won't be able to find that angle from the outset what you need to do is you need to find angles um, surrounding because if you can find any of these angles here so if you can find um, that one if you can also find this one um, I think you already know what this is going to be well if this is just a straight line a DOB uh, then this angle here is going to be 180 degrees because you know angles on a straight line have to um, add up to 180 so as it's just a straight line this is just a semicircle which is 180 degrees so these are things you should know from the foundation tier okay so um, right so what you need to do is you need to see if you can spot any of the, those laws so you need to learn those laws there's about six of them I believe there's six different laws but if you can memorize them then you're more or less home or dry because you just need to spot these in in the diagram so as you can see when I see tangents you see they've given you two tangents BC so BC and AC are tangent tangents um, automatically I think about this rule here so let me just show you this is actually um, my guide so my GCSE maths in four weeks revision guide this is the actual guide itself from the from the main revision program I have a lesson on uh, circle theorems and I basically just summarize all of the the key theorems that you need to know and I've rewritten them in my own in my own terms so when you see two tangents I think about this rule here so this is rule four and it says tangents tangents drawn from two outside points create two congruent congruent meaning exactly the same right angle triangle so as you can see here um, those are your tangents BC and AC and obviously here this these are radii here because O to B if O is the center then that is actually a radius and a radius as I was saying for radius meets the tangent at 90 degrees and that's why I put a right angle there and likewise um, the tangent AC meets the radius OA 
at the right angle and I've put another right angle here. But the key thing here is you actually create two congruent right angle triangles. So the triangle OAC, so this triangle here, is exactly the same as OBC. So we'll have exactly the same angles as well. And that's what I've written down here. So triangles A, triangles AOC and BOC are congruent. So angle AOC is equal to angle BOC. So that is uh, these angles here. So angle A OC and I'll just, I'll just draw it on here actually as well. So um, this here, angle AOC is the same as BOC, so that's these two are the same here. And also ACO, so C being the middle where the angle is, A and O enclosing it this time is actually this angle up here, this small angle, is the same as BCO, so it's the same as that. So they are all the same. Okay, so let's just um, get rid of that. And go back to our question. So, okay, with circle theorem questions, what you want to do is you want to try and imagine, because um, what, what what helps, and th this helps is if you um, remove some of these lines. So, by removing this line OD, um, you can clearly see that this is the, um, Well, that is that law four, which I just showed you. You see, you've got the uh, two tangents, and um, they create two congruent right angle triangles. So, with that, sometimes it helps because what they do is they don't give you a straightforward question. You know, most of these questions, they put, you know, they'll have more than one law. What involves more than one law? It also has a lot of lines and and shapes. So. Sometimes it's best to just imagine that some of these lines are not there, so you can really identify the law. You can really pinpoint um, that rule. So as we have two identical right angle triangles, what that means is is these angles here. Well, we know these two are obviously going to be right angle triangles. You know that already because, as I said before, the tangent meets the radius at ninety degrees. So those two are right angles. Um, if this is 34 here, then this is exactly the same as this angle here. So angle BCO is the same as angle OCA, which is again 34. So that's exactly the same. So by doing this, what we're doing is we're just unlocking or we're uncovering more and more angles. So we've got these two. Uh, we We've got this one. We can also find these two angles as well now because we can just use angles in a triangle or you can even use angles in a kite or a quadrilateral because this here is a quadrilateral. B-O-A-C is a quadrilateral and if we've got three angles here, we've got 90, 90 and this whole angle here. Just imagine this being one uh, big quadrilateral this angle here, whole angle is 68, then we can take all of those angles away from 360 to give us all of this here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work out all of this in one go. Um, so what we have is we have 90. We have 90, add 90, add those two angles there, which is 34, add 34, which is 68. So let's add all of those up. And what that gives you, it gives you 8, 0 at 0 is 8, 9 at 9 at 6, 9 to 9 is 18, add the 6 is 24, so we have 248. Okay, so remember angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360, so if we just take this away from 360, uh, what that leaves us with, so if we're just counting up, so what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to count up, so from 248 to 360, well, if we add on 100, that gives us 348, and then we add on another 12, I think that takes us to our total of 360. So the difference between the two is going to be 112. That's 112. So both of these here, this whole angle, the entire angle is actually 112. So I didn't actually divide the two up, I just calculated them all in one go. So as I was saying before, um, what we can think about then, because we already know what this angle is here, as DOB is just a straight line, we know this is just a semicircle, this is just 180 degrees. Right, so what that means is we can now use angles around a point because we've got all the rest of the angles, we know from here going up to there is 112. 
and we know this here is 180 so what we can do is we can use um, we can use angles around a point so you just I suppose we're just using this law again so first we need to add on or we'll add these two angles here so 180 add 112 so 180 add 112 is going to equal to so as a higher tier student you should be able to do these mentally I mean you shouldn't be I know I've used the column method here but if you are really aiming for an A or an A star um, you shouldn't have to use um, you know your mental mental arithmetic should be strong enough to um, to work this out in your head so 180 add 112 what you should do is, if you're doing it mentally, just partition the number. So add on 100 and then add on a 12. So 180, add on 100 gives us 280. Add on another 12 gives us 300, sorry, 292. Okay, let me just, uh, so 200. Okay, it's not, I know it's not that clear from there, but can we just uh, scroll that out. So we have 292. I guess we have 292 and we have remember, angles around a point as well as another foundation tier law. Notice how a lot of these laws are found because foundation tier laws because you know most of the high tier is actually built up from the foundation tier. I mean if you really break this down all of this is just foundation tier concepts. I mean we had angles in a triangle to begin with we've just got a right angle here um, angles around a point so a lot of this is um, foundation tier stuff. I mean, the only higher tier concept we use was right in the beginning. It's just knowing the fact that the tangents meet, well, the tangents uh, meet the circumference, and they create two congruent right angle triangles. I mean, that's the only theory that we've used from the higher tier. I mean, all the working, as you can see, all the working involved is all foundation tier stuff. Right. So all of these angles here add up to two hundred ninety-two. Okay, taking that away from. 360 or just simply counting up. It's probably better to count up there because we're not too far off from 360. Leaves us with 60 add 8. It's 8. If you add 8 to 292, it takes 300 and then add on the 60. So in total, we've got 68. So this angle here, the angle we were looking for, angle DOA, is equal to 68. So that is your answer there. So just remember that with circle theorem questions, um, well, you're not going to find the angle immediately. We didn't find this angle here. What we did is we looked for all the angles which surround it. So I thought, okay, we know this is 180. If we can basically work out these two angles here, you know, in the right angle triangles near the centre, um, then it's just simply angles around a point. So, but in order to do that, we had to think about all these other angles in those right angle triangles. So remember to run through your laws. Um, another important point is you really need to remember the foundation tier stuff. Um, that's why I recommend in my GCSE Maths in four weeks program to really master the foundation tier first because if you're really you know striving for that A or the A star um, you need to really master all of that because you know first of all it's um, well it's synoptic which means foundation tier stuff will appear in the higher tier questions as well I mean a lot of the working is foundation tier stuff and um, also makes it easier to understand the higher higher tier material as well. So make sure your foundation tier skills are up to scratch before um, going through all the higher tier stuff. But as I said before, if you can learn all of those rules, um, if your foundation tier, um, if you're good at the foundation tier, if your foundation tier skills are there, if you can learn all of those rules from the higher tier. So let me just, uh, okay, what I need to do is I need to remove this to go back to, okay, what you could do is you could just pause it there and just uh, read through the the answer in your own time but if i go back to these rules here you need to learn all of these rules here some more here uh, once you learn these and you can memorize them then you're pretty much home and dry it's just the case of just spotting them in the exam